It's 5 a.m. off Brittany's coast. A group of scientists are on a mission to uncover the genetic secrets of marine life. They have two weeks to collect live samples of animal and plant species. A vast treasure hunt 20 meters underwater. Two hours later, they're joined by a scientific vessel armed with a battery of tools. These have already been collected and sequenced, so we won't keep them for nothing. We'll put them back in the water. We have some crustaceans, a hermit crab. We're keeping this one and taking it to the lab. That day, their area of interest is located on muddy sediment in the Bay of Saint-Malo. The harbor's waters, rife with human activity, are home to rich flora and fauna, never studied before in DNA projects. We need to clean our samples with mesh screens, first a 5mm screen, then a 1mm screen. Don't be fooled, they're not visible to the naked eye, but this is the kind of sample where we'll find the largest number of species. 10 square centimeters can harbor more than 100 living organisms. Over the next eight years, 4,500 species will be collected on the coast, in mainland France and its overseas territories. It's an inventory, a database of the current state of biodiversity. If we want to be able to say there's less or more biodiversity in 20 years' time, we need a benchmark. According to the Museum of Natural History, one of the project's co-organizers, 50 to 75 percent of marine biodiversity could disappear by the end of the century. Once they're out of the water, marine samples must be stored in ice pack coolers at 3 degrees Celsius, the ocean's temperature 20 meters below the surface. The animals need to stay alive before we get to the marine station. There's no time to waste. The catch of the day is now ready to be transferred to the Dinard Marine Station, less than five kilometers away. Dozens of scientists from across the country and the globe are waiting to carefully sort out and select species one tweezer at a time. Even with optimal temperatures, some didn't survive the trip back to the lab. The head is gone, so leave it. We only want those who are still moving. If they're not moving, that means they're dead. The work of taxonomists can now begin. This group of biologists can visually recognize and classify living organisms. They will determine if the genome of a given species has yet to be sequenced. It is painstaking work. We receive samples straight from the ocean, so we need to identify species one by one, and only then can we check if we already have their DNA or not. Only one individual per species will be referenced and sequenced. Each sample flash frozen in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees before being transferred to a sequencing center near Paris. Without cryopreservation, the genetic material could get damaged. In just nine days, out of 4,500 target species, 320 have been frozen, ready to be genetically analyzed. The program hopes to identify some 70 million genes, which will help scientists trace the level of genetic diversity within species. Some might have similar features, but thanks to genetic testing, we realize that they don't have any genes in common. So what we thought was a single species turned out to be two, three or four species. It's too early to imagine all the scientific breakthroughs that could be made thanks to this vast atlas of marine genes. Researchers hope the database will eventually contribute to the discovery of new molecules for use in medicine, agriculture and other fields.